So here's my wife Nicola and we're taking the baby mushroom picking as well. Great way to get some exercise, teach the baby which way is up and down to get a nice birth. So we're back out in the woods again and we've found an interesting mushroom for you. Here it is here. It's called Hydnum rufescens. Now I'm going to pick it and show you the under underside of it and from that I'd like, you to, like to ask you a question. For the common name of this mushroom, just wait till that's in focus. This has got, it's called the something mushroom and it's named after a spiny <laughs> mammal. Have you guessed it? It's called the hedgehog mushroom. Uh, this is a particular type of hedgehog mushroom called the terracotta hedgehog because of its kind of terracotta colouring. It's edible and regarded as good. So we're going to pick a few um, small specimens of this to take back. So what's interesting about this is it doesn't have gills, it doesn't have pores, but it has spines, which makes it, you know, unique and interesting. So here's a close-up of one. You can see the spines. Um, let's have a look at the features. So the cap is uh, quite irregular. Is it actually terracotta then, that colour? What is terracotta? Like, you know, like terracotta pots. It's kind of like a light terracotta, I'd say. Okay, so we've just been discussing this and we think this is kind of a light terracotta. Um, so unlike the, the wood hedgehog, Hydnum repandum, the spines on this are kind of free, almost free from the stem. That means that they're not going running down the stem. So on the wood, wood hedgehog, they're decurrent. They go down the stem, whereas here they're kind of free. The wood hedgehog is much paler, and um, it's uh, kind of stouter and more, more formidable, a bit more solid. But this is still edible, so this is an old specimen. We'll find some decent, decent versions. But there you go, terracotta hedgehog. I'm going to show you something strange about this. Look at this. They kind of break off the spines. Now you can see them. So that's the spore bearing surface. I guess it's another strategy of getting a large surface area, whereas gills is a, another. There, there is one. Terracotta hedgehog. A smaller one. Oh, it's a bit. See the spines there have not quite developed yet. Much smaller. So how about medicinally? Well, besides the usual, and it's bizarre that I can say that, the usual anti-tumor stuff, as well as the antibacterial and so on, particular to the Hydnum genus, they've been implicated in nerve regrowth. As well as that, they've been implicated in being able to lower blood cholesterol. And quite interestingly, there was a study, apparently, of 60 mice where they fed them powdered hedgehog mushroom. And relative to controls, after exercise, the mouse, the mice showed greater stamina during exercise, less fatigue, and lower levels of lactic acid after exercise. So perhaps a good one to eat whilst training for a marathon. Look the orange bruising there, where I've scraped off the stem. So against this backdrop here, they stand out quite a bit. Got kind of odd shapes to them. Nicholas found a nice specimen, quite a big one, good quality. I'll just give you an idea of the habitat that this is in. You can not kind of spot these as well, a little bit like chanterelles in that they pop out a little bit but they're definitely difficult against a backdrop like this where there's a lot of leaf litter and a lot of green cover as well. But you just got to look around for them and go with your instincts. I've got a bit of a kind of belief that we have foraging instincts and that they've kind of maintained with us from when we were, we evolved from primates or other primates and I think that intuition still exists. 
and if you somehow sometimes you feel I want to go look over there and you'll find something I think that's because of our foraging origins it's some kind of subconscious pull towards a particular area and just as I was saying that sometimes you just got to go with your instincts for some reason my wife was and me were, we were pulled over in this direction for some reason and look what we found so we've never found this before we knew that the terracotta hedgehogs were over there, but these are the other hedgehog. So this is the classic wood hedgehog, or Hydnum repandum. And so take a look at this. Wow, this is incredible. Absolutely fantastic. So as you can see, that is a, it's much bigger than the terracotta hedgehog. It's got a broader base, it's whiter, the spines are more decurrent, much more decurrent. They kind of run down the stem. The cap of it is much paler than the terracotta. And that, this is regarded again as another delicious edible mushroom. And I'm really thrilled to have found that. This is a fantastic find. And believe it or not, just down there next to this is a whole load of trumpet chanterelles as well. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison. We've got the wood hedgehog here, terracotta hedgehog here. You can see this one's much more orange. Um, it's got its free uh, spikes, not gills. This has got decurrent spikes. Cap, this is much whiter. This is much more orange and it's much more deformed actually, it's cap. And this wood hedgehog is obviously bigger. So there you go, two different types of hedgehog. There's a couple of uh, wood hedgehogs there. Just down here we've got trumpet chanterelles. You can see coral fungus over here. And you can see over there, this spot of orange just about there. That's a terracotta hedgehog. So we've got everything around here. some more hedgehogs. So what we've also just come across is some kind of crab apple and there's quite a few of them on the floor. Probably not quite enough here but sometimes in the woods you will find these and if you can find them in large enough quantity then they have to be cooked but you can make a nice um, apple sauce for example or something like that anyway it's just worth keeping your eyes peeled for things like this as well there they are and the interesting thing about these is they'll often last well into the winter so although on the floor here you can see for example there's one there and there's a few about there's a lot of leaves I've been into the woods before where all the leaves have rotted down and there's just a whole bunch of apples spread out. There we go. So a nice thing to do with these is make a crab apple jelly, which is good enough in itself really. Eat with cheese and things like that. Um, but you can also use the crab apple jelly as a base for other flavours. So I think sometimes people add chilli or herbs or whatever you want really. It's nice. Good days, mushrooming. Here's a beautiful mushroom. This is a grassland species of a family called wax caps because they have a feeling the caps are kind of like wax. But look how strikingly red that is. And uh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely beautiful mushroom. So look at this, how fantastic is this? This is what we got, um, a whole bunch of trumpet chanterelles and there was hundreds more of these. 
uh, lots of um, terracotta hedgehog mushrooms and there was again there was just so many more of these uh, it's a part of the wood where no one really goes we found some more crab apples some different ones and we, we actually detected these by smelling them on the air the smell of apple and we looked down and found, saw them and some chestnuts and of course the wood hedgehog so there you go that's our haul and what we're gonna do now is have some on toast have some hedgehogs on toast as I saw on I think firstnature.com some guy was saying that, that was his favorite so I'm gonna try it but we're gonna try cooking some wood hedgehog hydnum rapandum and some terracotta hedgehog hydnum rufescens just in butter to start with and just do a little taste comparison so got the two types of hedgehog mushroom here just gonna chop these bad boys up and then fry them in a bit of butter just for a taste test let's do it so I'm interested to see inside this wow look at that that's fantastic so clean no insect infestation you know perfect nice mushroom and what we're going to do is we're just going to cut a thin slice of it and we're going to fry that slice and eat that slice and then let's have a look at the terracotta hedgehog again very good interior no uh, infestation, insect infestation, absolutely fantastic. And yeah, let's fry that bit up. It's a bit unfair because obviously the terracotta is a bit smaller, but let's do it. I'm gonna make that a little bit thinner, I think, but then we'll fry it. All done, let's give these a go. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with the terracotta hedgehog. It's a little bit hot, man. It's quite hard to place that flavour. Oh, I might have overcooked it a bit. It's not unpleasant, but uh, didn't taste particularly, you know, something I'd write home about. What about the wood hedgehog? Yeah, that's a bit nicer. Um, it's got a bit more of a fruity flavour. I'd probably overcook these a bit, but I must admit, I'm a little underwhelmed. <laughs> Actually, I thought given the kind of reviews of this mushroom, I thought it would taste a lot better. Perhaps there's better ways to cook it. Um, yeah, sorry about that, but that's my genuine reaction <laughs> to it. In any case, I think it's regarded as a fantastic edible mushroom. Perhaps you'll enjoy it more. I'm gonna now cook some hedgehogs on toast to finish this off, and I'll try and cook them a bit less, and, and then I'll give you the verdict on that. I think they got a little bit overcooked last time. In this case, there's a few more in there. The juices are coming out and they're more kind of sautéing in their own juices. And the smell coming off here is fantastic. Really rich kind of fruity mushroomy smell. So I'm, I'm feeling optimistic about this. We did read, however, that if they get too cold or the older specimens can be a bit bitter, which is why people prefer younger specimens or those before the frost. But, Let's give this a go on toast and see what happens. Here you go, Zen.
That's good. That is good. I think maybe there is a slight hint of bitterness. Perhaps these are a bit too big. No, 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 no. That's really good, actually. I think pepperiness is perhaps a better um, term for it. And with the pepper, that's kind of enhanced that, that sense of it. And um, actually, in some places, they use this as a... They add it raw to salads to add a kind of peppery taste. So, yeah, that's really good. It's an excellent edible mushroom. Fantastic. All right, well, that's it for now. And um, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time for more mushroom adventures.